from now when their country's presidential election is back on track. The election had originally been scheduled to take place February 25th before they were abruptly postponed by President Macky Sall and codified by Parliament. But there were two major developments on Tuesday. First, 15 out of 20 candidates approved to take part in the election's call for them to take place no later than April 2nd the date that President Macky Sall is suspected to leave office. Second, the country's Constitutional Council republished the list of qualified candidates with little or no change. Senegalese political analyst Ibrahim Khan tells me the Constitutional Council is right for refusing to add new candidates. They have the right to appeal to the public or to the different institutions for their participation to the election. But the thing is that the list is already set by the Constitutional Council, and I think the Constitutional Council will not come back again and reopen the list. And I think it's over. Those who are not on the list can wait the next five years to prepare their participation. But let me ask you about the call by these candidates for the election to be held no later than April 2nd. Is that feasible? Well, apparently it's possible if they shorten the duration of uh, the campaign. You know, usually in Senegal, the campaign for presidential election is three weeks. But the campaign for legislative is two weeks. And people believe that because they can do the campaign for legislative in two weeks, they can do that campaign also in a two weeks. So now the whole question is when do we start? There are people who believe that we can start the campaign next week so that the election will be held either on the 10th of uh, March or on the 17th of March. Because usually in Senegal, there is two rounds. The second round may be held just one week before the handover of power, which means that uh, Macky Sall will be able to hand over the power to the new elected president. I think that's what people believe that the president may be announcing probably tomorrow because he needs to adopt a decree in that regard. They are still discussing with many, many actors. So hopefully that can be done. Because if the election first round is not held by the 17th of March, it means that the new president will come in after the 2nd of April. And after the 2nd of April, Macky Sall will not be there. In that case, the Constitutional Council will come in first to have a say on the end of Macky Sall tenure, and then probably because the Constitution said the, that the Speaker of the Parliament can take over for three months and the Speaker can organize the modalities during the three-month period. That's possible. But everybody wants the election to be held before the departure of Macky Sall because that will mean that we are still in the time frame of the Constitution. Ibrahim Makan is a Senegalese political analyst. He was speaking with us from the capital, Dakar. The United States warned Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo at the UN on Tuesday that they must walk back from the brink of war, according to French news agency AFP. Kinshasa, the UN, and Western countries say Rwanda is supporting the M23 rebel group operating in the eastern DRC, an allegation that Kigali denies. Meanwhile, DRC Prime Minister Jean-Michel Sama Lukonda resigned on Tuesday, leading to the dissolution of his government. Joining us for more on these developments from Goma in eastern DRC is reporter Al Katanti Sebiti Jaffa. Coming from Kinshasa, the latest news from DRC is the resignation of the Prime Minister Jean-Michel Samarokonde. 20th February was the last date given to all voted parliament members to choose between their mandate or their other occupation politically. And the Prime Minister Samuel Okonde decided to resign so that the President Tisekedi can now appoint a new Prime Minister to create a new government of DRC. With the resignation of the Prime Minister, what happens to the rest of the government? The Prime Minister is the head of government. And when he resigned, this means that all his government will follow him. And this is what happened in the Democratic Republic of Congo today. We can say that the Samarokonde government 
is not anymore the government of DRC, but still allowed to operate because we have some pending affairs and current affairs. They will continue working as ministers till when the president of DRC will appoint a new prime minister, the one who will create a new government. We understand there have been some development uh, a week ago or so. Two South African soldiers died in the operation near Goma. What's the latest about that? Bodies of the two South African soldiers who were killed in Mubambiro last week were repatriated today in South Africa. The government of South Africa didn't allow journalists to cover the ceremony, but the body landed in South Africa today in order to be buried in their country of origin. We know in the theater, we have South African troops, we have the DRC forces assisted by the FDLR, and then the M23. Bring us up to date. What's the latest about the conflict itself? The on-ground situation is still the same. We are observing a statu quo in the front line of Sake, where FRDC is still controlling the city and M23 controlling all hills around the city of Sake. It was reported also today that M23 launched a rocket in the city of Sake, which killed two people and injured some civilian in the same city of Sake. And this is since the last week, day by day, M23 is killing civilian when launching rockets in the city of Sake. That was reported. South Africa's unemployment rate, already the highest in the world, rose to 32.1% in fourth quarter of 2023, according to official government figures released on Tuesday. The quarterly labor force survey reported that the number of unemployment working age people in South Africa rose to 7.9 million after 46,000 more became unemployed in last three months of 2023, increasing from 31.9%. The news is a blow to the ruling African National Congress party as it faces its steepest election test ever in few months. The desperately high unemployment rate is a key voter issue. Unemployment among those aged 15 to 24 was 59.4% at the end of last year as Africa's most advanced economy continued to struggle to create jobs for young people entering the workforce. The ANC has been in government since the end of the apartheid system of white minority rule in 1994 but has seen its support gradually went over the last 30 years largely because of its failure to deliver jobs housing and services to millions of poor people several polls predict the anc may dip below 50 percent of the vote in the year's national election which would be a landmark moment in south african politics if the anc loses its majority it would need to go into coercion to remain in government and keep President Cyril Ramaphosa in office for a second and final five-year term. A coercion has never happened on a national level in South Africa, and it would end the dominancy of the party once led by Nelson Mandela. The warning signs for ANC came in local elections in 2021 when the party received less than 50% in a vote for the first time. South Africa's main opposition party, the Democratic Alliance, is exploring the possibility of its own coalition agreement with numerous other smaller parties, hoping it might force the ANC out of government completely. The date of this year's election has not yet been announced. It's expected to take place between May and August. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.